Okay, I'm gonna hit record. Um, I thought tonight we could do like um, question and answer type of thing. I usually try to give like a little, you know, helpful blurb at the beginning, but sometimes um, time is best spent with questions and answers. Um, especially for someone like you, Susan, when you're, where you're brand new, it's, this is a great way to, um, get in contact and be face to face and ask any questions that you have. So we emailed a little bit today, right? That was you. Yeah. Yes. So what other questions do you have? She literally, you've been a coach for like what, two weeks, maybe yes, two weeks. Very, very, very new. I'm still, um, I have a lot of questions. Okay. Well, this is a good place to ask. And then Michelle could even give feedback too. Michelle's been a coach a little longer. She kind of had a period of like um, some family stuff going on. You were under a lot of stress at one point. And so you just kind of put it on the back burner, which is the nice thing. You can do that. Like nobody's making you, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. So, um, but she's kind of back in the swing of things just in the last maybe two months. Yeah. Right around January. Yeah. So let's hear your questions and see if we can help you. Okay. Um, how soon should I be starting a challenge group? Should I, that be my next step at this point? I think if you finished the training and you kind of have an idea of what, how it works, then yes. <laughs> if you want to do something with it, if you want to be a coach, then yes, I would usually <laughs> say to start a challenge group. And, um, like I talked to you about earlier, I usually start about, or announce it three weeks in advance. So okay. that gives me time to correspond with people back and forth. And it gives them about a week to order and get their products so that they're prepared for the start date. Okay. Right. But you're totally fine. I'm starting. I start one. I don't have my calendar. Oh yes, I do. If you wanted to run one together, um, we can do that. And let me see when my next one's starting. I really have it planned out on a calendar. Um, my next one is supposed to start, I actually started one early this month, so I'm not supposed to start until April 13th, but we will probably be starting one earlier than that. Um, uh, let me I was see. thinking like April 6th, that's when, um, we have spring break the week before teachers. Oh yeah. Um, so I was thinking that might just be a good time to start for for me personally. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's great. Um, I will probably end up starting one around that time too, but yeah, I think April 6th is a great date. Hi, Christy. Um, what else do you have? What other questions do you have? Um, I've had two people ask me questions, but then, you know, I give them some information and they just kind of, okay, I'll get back with you. And I've, just decided to, you know, if they want to buy something, you know, they'll get in touch with me. I've been trying not to feel like maybe I didn't give them the right information or misguided them, you know, just try not to take it personally. Right. Um, discourage this early on. Um, so I'm just trying, I guess at this point, like I put different posts out on Facebook and different things and people are kind of, Oh, are you drinking Shakeology? Different things like that. I just don't want to be overbearing. So yeah, I think that's the reason we have people come up with that posting rotation is so that when you're posting, you're making sure to have variety in your post and you're not posting Peach Body all day long. But um, it's not a bad thing to have roundabout ways of talking about what you're doing, even if you say something like, "Oh, just finished my, you know." My workout for the day, I got up earlier. You know what I mean? Like you can talk about having a healthy lifestyle without talking about necessarily a product you're using. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, Christy Borders is a really good example of how to, she's a pretty, um, you're, I would consider you a pretty forward person, Christy, but she also has kind of gotten into a groove with how to talk to people without making people feel pressured or annoyed. And I had another one of my coaches today, um, and you can do this too, Susan, if you're worried about wording or the way you're talking to people, you can for sure either send that to me or post it in Team Inspire and get some feedback from people um, as to how they might say it different or if you're doing something that you could be just tweak a little bit to do it differently. Um, one of my coaches, Wileen, I did that with her today because she was sending a message that said, um, I'd have to look it up, but 
it was like, I'm, I'm looking or I'm running a group and you'd have to invest. And it was it. And so I, I just offered a couple of suggestions for her to say, tell her what, tell them what you're looking for. Christy borders is really good at doing this thing. I'm looking for two to three moms who've had babies in the last few years and they're looking to lose the baby weight or tone up or whatever after having kids. Um, to tell them who you're looking for, like, and if this fits you, like if this describes you or you know someone that this describes, I would love to help them type of thing. Christy, do you have anything to add for that? Susan's a brand new coach of like two weeks. So Christy, if you have to add. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure that you don't hear my daughter. Um, no, you're fine, we can hear her. We hear her. <laughs> you can probably hear both of them. Um, yeah, so, I do take more of a forward approach just because it's in my personality. So you kind of just have to do a gut check of like the conversations that you've had with people in the past. And, um, you know, I always reconnect in the beginning of, you know, Hey, it's been a long time. And then maybe if you have a memory with them, you kind of just bring it up. Like, remember when we did that, that was so fun. You know, I, I see that you've got two kids now, um, super cute, stuff like that. So you got the small talk in the beginning and then, I just say, hey, I don't know if you've, you know, seen any of my posts, but, um, and then I kind of just do like a two sentence, my story with Beachbody, like, you know, I lost 60 pounds after having two girls back to back. This is what it's done for me. Um, you know, I, paid, I became a coach because of that, so I could pay it forward. And, you know, I don't know what you're doing for your current workouts, you know, or if there's a void in, in your life, but... I'm sorry. We're really loud in this house right now. Um, but, um, you know, if this is you, then I'd love to have you on board and be in my group. Um, if not, no biggie. That's, you know, I just wanted to, just wanted to see if I could help something along those lines. And like, so, I mean, I got all that stuff from Tiffany. It's not like I didn't make any of this on my own. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, so you kind of, um, it seems like pretty non- you know, most people respond like, Hey, yeah, you know, I do have 30 pounds to lose because I did have a baby. Um, but yeah, I, most of the, I'd say 80% of people respond back, which is good. But not but everybody actually because, says yes and joins your groups, right? Oh, what'd you say? I said, not everybody joins your groups, right? Oh no, definitely not. And that's okay. No. I think that's something that's really hard for people to get past is the no. Um, and I try to teach people that the more no's you hear, the more yeses you're going to hear because a lot of people are just afraid or they get really discouraged by that. And so they just stop. They start to question and they stop talking to people and, or they really rely on like the one person that was maybe interested instead of just moving on and talking to more people. So, um, if you're not talking to enough people, then the people that are saying no can seem like, it's everyone saying no, but it can be because if you're only talking to two people and they both say no, it's like, oh my gosh, like my whole life is over because those two people said no. Whereas if you continue, continually are talking to more people, it doesn't seem as um, awful because you're going to hear more yeses because you're talking to more people. Does that make sense? It does. I do have a question. Yeah. Um, so let's say you say two or three people, you're looking for two or three people. Well, let's say that five people, you know, want to join. Do you turn anyone away? I mean, you don't want to make your groups too big, but <laughs> you know, how do you approach that without getting, especially for a new coach? Yeah. I either put them in a separate group if I feel like my group is getting too big. I'm running a group right now that has 16, and I feel like it's too big. Mm -hmm. That's my personal preference. It really depends on the person. Um, if I'm looking for two or three people and I end up with five, that's awesome. And I'll put five people in a group or 10 people, but I don't like over 10. That's just personal. I feel like I can't keep track of who's in there if there's more than five or six people. I think eight's my magic number. Eight is? Yeah, I just, I don't feel like I can keep track of them. I feel like I forget who's in there. And if someone's not posting, I forget to tag them because um, I'm, there's too many to keep track of but there are people who run groups of 50 people. It just depends on your, your style and your personality and what you want. But, um, yeah, I don't turn people away. 
unless they're like, I want, I don't want to buy the program. And I'm like, well, okay, then that doesn't really make sense that you'd be in this group. So right. Okay. then I would, but not if, um, if they, you know, are investing and they want help. Um, anything else, Susan? Does that help? Does what Christy said help? Yes. Yeah, I think um, I'm. I have a style that's a lot as casual like hers, um, where I'm just like, it's okay if you're not interested. I think the only time we get pushy. I was just saying this on my last on a call last night. I think the only time we get pushy is if we're pushing when the person says no, right? Like inviting someone is not pushy. It's pushy when they say no. And you're like, well, you know, you try to convince or argue or go on and on about it. That's pushy. Not inviting. Not sending an invitation saying, this is who I'm looking for. No idea if it's you or someone you know. But I'm looking for two to three people that might be interested in starting my next group. And the nice thing is, you know, it, it is appropriate to be posting beach party challenge group related stuff, coaching related stuff on your personal page because then – you can say things like Christy did. Like, I'm not sure if you've seen my posts or I'm sure you've seen some of my posts that I run fitness challenge groups type of thing. So if you're never posting on social media about it, people have a disconnect when you're sending an invite. They're like, what? Like, what is she doing? But if, if they know it's part of your life, then it makes a lot more sense. Okay. Dinner's ready. What was that? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I think I think that also for me the big change came when um, it became a lot easier to converse with people when I realized that it wasn't going to work for everybody. I don't know what it was about accepting that, but it, once I accepted that, sometimes I can offer advice that's unrelated to Beachbody, and this isn't going to work for everybody, and it's not going to be the answer to everybody. Some people some people work and they go to the gym on their way home and it's, it's not really convenient to come home after a full day of working. Um, so what I offer for them are the programs that are like the, the weights, the strength training. So it's like, here's something you could do at the gym. But honestly, like it's getting to the point where it, I'm more invested in just helping the other people. And, and I've created a group where they can be in. So like if I've got the gym goers or if I got that, but what I find, and I even, I'm honest about it. I'll, I'll just tell them like, this isn't as, as active of a group. Because these people aren't really investing anything new. They're not trying anything new. They're not really engaged. They're not really posting. And so I'm pretty honest about the fact that if you can't, anyways, about that. And just understanding that it's not going to work for everybody and just explaining that what I think might work for them. So I'll, some people will come back to me and they'll say, I really want to do this, but like I don't have the money or I just don't have, I can't, I, there's no way I can convince my husband to let me spend this money on myself. And so I'll just take them through my process. I spent $10 on a Jillian Michaels DVD. Then I spent $50 on a Lindsay Brand DVD. And I'll like take them through, through my steps and I'll explain it to them. And then all of a sudden, a couple months later, and this is just now happening because this is just what I started doing. Like within the last six months, they'll come to me and say, okay, I think I'm ready. Like I think I want to do the 21 day fix. This is when it was on sale. I want to do the 21 day fix. I want to do this. But because I established this connection of, this doesn't have to work for everybody. It just has to be on your time and your schedule and your budget. Then they trust me and they can come to me and say, because before I was so afraid of saying anything else besides Beachbody, like recommending anything else. I was so afraid of it. Like, Oh no, like, I don't know. Does that mean I don't trust the product? Does that mean I'm not believing in the product? And it's like, has nothing to do with that. So anyways, that was my journey. I think you putting the customer first, why Lena and I were talking about this today uh, in a Facebook message, but putting the customer first is the most important thing. Because if you're in your mind, like, well, I really want to sell them this because, you know, I'm going to earn commission on this, but I'm not going to earn. Like, if you're truthful with them on what you really feel like will work, that's going to build trust when it does work, right? If you tell them, I mean, I've had so many people I recommend Lindsay Brin to because not as much anymore, but I did when I first started all the time. And um, that did establish trust. And even now, when I posted that I quit the 21 Day Fix Extreme, I had a ginormous like thread of people like, oh my gosh, I love that you don't just, and I even had people messaging me saying, I love that you didn't, like that you were true to you and that you're not just like a super huge fan, fake, uh, like a fake fan of everything that comes out, like Beachbody. And I'm not, 
I'm not. I didn't like that program. Therefore, I'm not good at recommending it because I don't like it. And, I, and it's not like I don't like it. I liked it. I just didn't like what it was doing for me personally at the time. I wasn't looking just to get skinny. Um, so I, I think that, like Ashley said, establishes trust when you can be honest and upfront about something that doesn't work for you or that you didn't like or that if it's another product and you really feel like that's what would be, would be good for that person, then that builds trust that you're not just out to earn money. Right. right? Okay. Anything else that you can think of while we're on here? Um, no, no, off the top of my head. So. Okay. No, you're good. I had one question. Yes. And I, I, cause I wanted to know how you did this and this might help everybody else when you answer this. Um, so the nutrition education side of things. Yeah. So I feel like in my groups, I'm not really engaged in that part of it as much as like, I think I would be if I was um, promoting the things that I've learned about nutrition, but I feel like I'm, a, I'm afraid to share that because like the way I eat is very different, right? Like it's just different. Right. Um, I'm not perfect. Like I still eat a whole bunch of crap just like everybody else. But the point is, is like, what approach do you take? in the group that's kind of a one size fits all that's kind of like educating them and helping them make their own food choices. Right. Um, 20 minute fix. So you don't have to talk about that product necessarily, but that approach of whole foods, more yeah. whole foods, less processed foods, more foods with one ingredient, um, portion control, focusing on, um, hunger cues versus, like, like, and really tuning into if you're hungry versus thirsty type of thing. So yeah. I don't ever say like, you shouldn't be eating dairy necessarily. Like, I don't say that even though I don't personally eat dairy very often, but um, that's mostly because my child will die if she touches it or breathes mm -hmm. it. But like there, there are things that like I personally believe in. That are accessible um, across the board. For me, yeah. And I feel like the 21 Day Fix has such a good overall meal plan that's flexible for people but also um is very whole food based for yeah food. actually i've noticed that in a lot of the recent programs like insanity pio a lot of the ones within the last year they have like food lists now right and then they like recommend like serving portions and then they try to list things um in order of most nutrition like the things at the top of the list are the most nutritious and they better all for you. started with 21 day fix because yeah they were getting such good feedback about that meal plan because it was by far the easiest meal plan to follow. So I, I feel like, like T25 and P90X3 had a version of it. Was it, is it gotten more details since 21 day fix? I don't know. I know that we gave such good feedback about the meal plan that they, the, the max 30 and the pile meal plan are almost identical. Mm -hmm. You can do the container. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, and that's okay. why they created portion fix too, so that people could use it for all programs because it was so much more simple and easy to follow versus freak P90X's meal plan is like a joke. Yeah. A joke. Yeah. It's really intensive. What about the people that have had, um, eating disorders? So I, I tell them not to follow the meal plan, but just to follow a general guideline of eating whole foods. Like you said, look at the ingredients, make sure it doesn't have whatever. I actually tell them not to count their calories and not to portion things out. Is that bad? I don't really have, I've never really dealt with eating disorders. I mean, I'm sure I have, but not like outright. Maybe they haven't said anything. Um, I would still, uh, most of them aren't eating enough. And so I still would have them not count calories, but use the 21 day fix meal plan. The containers. Yeah, because have you one, have the right have, macros, the right amount of protein true. and carbs and fruits and vegetables. And um, so I would, I, you guys, that's like my favorite meal plan. It really is. I don't just say that. <laughs> I think ever since I started advertising more recently, I've had more people come to me and say, I've had an eating disorder in the past and then I got over it, but now I, you know, that's where they've gained all their weight because now they don't know how to eat. And so then I'm afraid to give them a program that's going to have them obsess over food again. Because yeah, I don't want them to go into that, but you would have to be supportive in saying like, you don't have to stick. I mean, you have to think about it though. Most people that are have an eating disorder are eating far below the first calorie bracket of 21 day fix. So they're probably going to be going to struggle to get enough in just the first. Bracket. So they're eating all the wrong things. 
Right. And they're not, they're just not eating enough in general. I, my friend was over the other day and said she had a challenger who had, who was anorexic, who all she ate was lettuce. Like all day, she just pieced on lettuce all day long. And so the 21 day fix scared her in the amount of food that she needed to eat, which is most anorexics. Bulimic is a little bit different, but anorexics aren't eating nearly enough food. And so yeah. the first calorie bracket is like, that's like enough for like for them. days for them. Yeah. A couple of mine have been though, like they've been anorexic or bulimic. Most of them have thrown up and it's been um, because they stopped throwing up that they are, they are, they are eat, they're still eating the 3000 calorie meal. Like they're still eating the binge meal, but not throwing it up anymore. And so their bodies have just screwed up completely. Oh and so I feel like, well, I feel like 21 day fix really is. I just was afraid to recommend it because I was, I just wanted to know if anybody else had had experience with that because I'm starting to run into that. I don't know what I, what, how I advertise it or targeted the people that keep coming well, to me. Well, my friend has a ton of them and she does 21 day fix like with everyone. But okay. she also says, um, have a cheat meal every week and not to be perfect because she, um, like if they feel like my friend eats in the next calorie bracket above what she's supposed to. And she tells most of her challengers to do the same thing. Good, good idea. Because you can still see good results even if you're off. eating in the next calorie bracket up. It'll just take a little bit longer. And then okay. they don't feel hungry and then they're not like starving. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry for the hard question. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Um, I have one question. I just started drinking Shakeology. Um, is it normal for it to make you kind of feel a little not so great in the beginning of it. Someone told me to do like maybe half a scoop. Is that normal? Yeah. What kind are you, what kind are you drinking? Um, the veg and chocolate. Oh, the vegan chocolate. Um, I would try half a scoop because it's, it's, it's not as common with the vegan to be like gassy or bloaty. Mm -hmm. So I would go down to and try half a scoop okay. and see if that helps. Okay. Um, sorry. You're okay. Um, what are you, uh, mixing with it? Are you mixing anything with it? Um, I've tried, I've just been trying to kind of play around with it. I did fruit, strawberries, um, we've done spinach. And then tonight I just tried to do like water and just the powder to see how, if it was bad, just without it. Yeah. I, um, I always add half a, half of a banana and like a little bit of almond or peanut butter um, and ice, and I really like it that way, but I would try like a half a scoop and see how that, how that, how you do with that. It's not as common to have issues with the vegan as it is, um, regular, the regular flavors. That's why I'm like, what kind are you drinking? Cause almost every, like nine times out of 10, they're drinking the whey version. And I'm like, okay, you need to drink the vegan. And then they have no issues, but it could, if you're new to it. But it also depends on how many fruits and vegetables you're used to eating in your normal diet because psychology has all the fruits and vegetables you need in one serving. And if you're not used to that much fiber normally in your diet, if you kind of have a higher, if you eat lots of sandwiches and breads and, and, and dairy products and things like that, once you introduce all that fiber into your system, you'll get a stomach ache. My husband was like that. So, and with the vegan flavor. So Wait, sorry. I'm trying to type this, but it's not working. Oh, I was planning to type in another thing. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm trying to type something in another window, and it went to the wrong window. Okay, um, yeah, I feel like uh, Ashley's right on. If, you, if you're not used to eating a lot of fibrous foods, then you can be in trouble. So try half a scoop. See what happens. All right, thanks. Anybody else? Any questions? I have a question. Yes. Right. So mine's more of like the teams where I'm uh, partnering up, you know, with a success partner in a different team. How, you know, how do we have to stay in our teams and, ooh, I got this from my team. I can't share it with you. You know, because my sister's in a different upline. Yeah. And so I'm like, I want to share things with her and she's sharing things with me. And then I thought, are we going to get in trouble? Cause we're like sharing things that her upline shared with her that I, you know, like, is that bad? <laughs> no, I mean, it depends. It depends on, 
For me, I, I do help people from other downlines and uplines. Um, oh, where did Ashley go? I do help people from other downlines and uplines, but um, I'm not going to give them all of my training and all the stuff that I spend time on just because um, it's what I spend time on. And, but it yeah. depends. I'll give them bits, bits and pieces of what, and, but you know what? It's your sister. I'm not going to be like, no, you can't share with her. Like that's lame. Well, I was just thinking, you know, like she shared some things with her, um, that her upline has done. And then I, you know, I've shared like little pictures, like the workout. We had like a Monday workout for the, yeah. you know, and then I thought, well, once I start my team and then my downline, do I have to be like, oh, well, I didn't get this from my mm -hmm. downline. No, I mean, I, it's some teams are more strict about it than others where they're like, we're not, I've had some people on our team go ask for help and people not like not willing to share at all mm -hmm. and i'm willing to share and i will in fact i just got a message from a girl in a different she was actually going to sign up on our team and then got coaxed into signing up with another team at super saturday mm -hmm. and i so i struggle more to be willing to because i'm like look you signed up with someone else so don't come ask for my time and my training but I do share with her. I do um, give her feedback and advice, but I'm not going to be like, here's my whole team website. You can come in, but it's your sister. Yeah. I'm not, it's different. That's different. And, and that's why I was like, it's my sister. You know, we're all trying to get to the same. Yeah, I think spot. that's different. You guys are helping each other and you guys are, you're related. It's different. But um, then when I start my own team, yeah. you know, if I actually get a, you know, good, like Krista Murius, you know, I like, can start my own yeah. team. You know, do I have to like, ooh, I got this idea from my sister's team. I better not put that on there, you know? Does that um, matter? No, I, I think honestly, it's your sister. You, you guys do whatever works for you. I'm, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> All right. I was just like, my, you know, Brittany and I were like, I hope we don't get in trouble that we're sharing our ideas because we're working really well together. Yeah. We just on different teams. Yeah. Um, I get that. Now I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's not like you guys, I mean, you're going to share whether you share a website or tell each other. So mm -hmm. I don't think it matters. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Comments are always welcome. No. Okay. okay. I, I have one more. <laughs> yes. Ask away. So if someone wants, um, like, last month she was in your coaching at a glance group and um and it's one of my good friends and she wants more information on well how do you get more money like down the road you know once you have coaches underneath you and you know i'm just like that base and i know there's a left leg and a right leg and i've watched that video and some about team volume and yeah. i just don't understand it and i just i know you have to have points so it's hard for me to explain to her how you start getting those cycles or right. are you Has she watched the video or have you sent it to her? I haven't centered that video, but she was in your group and I was like, I wonder, you know, if, if that would help her. And she loved the group. Yeah. But she was like, I wonder, she, she was asking me, well, how do you move and start growing that once you get coaches? Right. So every time, well, and what I would say first is to ha is to send her that YouTube video. It's called Team Cycle Bonus. Okay. Um, just type in Team Cycle Bonus Beachbody and it will pop up. But it's based on the sales of your organization. So every time you have to be an Emerald coach to earn, be eligible. But every time you hit 100 volume points on one leg and 200 on the other leg, Beachbody pays you a bonus. So everything that people on your team sell or buy or whatever, all the volume they're generating, you can potentially get paid on in a bonus. So that's and the easiest way to explain it. And that's that $14 bonus. It's $14 as an emerald, 16 as a ruby, and 18 as a diamond. And which sounds like, meh, you know, that's not that much money, but it adds up a lot. So that's where the larger, that's where people start to earn a lot of money doing this is by building an organization that does the same thing they do 
and um, they're building their business and then that person gets paid on the sales of their of their organization the whole organization okay. so even if you have a bunch of points on one leg and not on the other leg you can only get paid um, based on your weak leg so because it has to be 200 on one leg 100 on the other and is your weak leg the one that's 100 uh, it doesn't matter where they take it from. They'll take it from wherever leg has the most. They'll take 200 and the, and the weak leg 100, basically. Yeah. But they'll flop over time because you can build them so that you're generating more volume on the other side. Does that make sense? Yes. And the volume is what people are buying, right? Um, yeah. Selling and, and all of the stuff that everybody sells, buys, all of that has volume points attached to it. And so the volume you're generating um, yeah, you can get paid out that bonus from Beachbody on. Okay. But that video will probably help her. Okay. And see, when I watched it, I was like, okay, I kind of get it, but I'm nowhere there, so I don't care. Yeah, I was the <laughs> same way. I'll worry about it when I see it myself, when I have yeah. my coaches. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was the same way. I didn't understand any of it, and I started actually earning like $14 and I was like, whoa, where did that $14 come from? And my coach had to be like, oh, it's because you're earning that, that bonus because people on your team are starting to start challenge groups and they're starting to build their own business. And so you're getting paid bonuses. Okay. Does that help? Yes. Thank you. Okay, cool. Anything else? Okay, cool. We, um, this is recorded, so if you guys have anybody that wants to watch it back, and I'll go find out where Ashley went. I don't know where she went. So, okay, cool. Let's talk next week. Hope you guys have an awesome night. Right, you too. Thanks. Yeah. Um.